Everything around us involves products that come from the mining industry. Porque todos tenemos de una u otra forma un auto, un celular, un computador eh, y ocupamos tecnología y todo eso en las comunicaciones. Going forward with our drive to eliminate carbon emissions, moving more to renewables, they all need a significant amount of new metals. So the question is, how do we carry on producing the raw materials that the world needs whilst also protecting the planet? ¿Cómo lo hacemos de forma tal que también devolvamos algo positivo y que lo que podamos impactar sea lo mínimo posible? Critical to achieving this is looking at how we deal with water, energy and waste. Committing to those targets means that we continually drive to find new technologies to take us to those targets and beyond. Muchas de las tecnologías más eficientes para el futuro se están probando hoy en Chile. Para los chilenos, la minería está en el ADN. Eh, es un pilar fundamental para el desarrollo económico y social de nuestro país. Chile produce el 28% del cobre a nivel mundial. Y ahí nosotros como Anglo American aportamos con 650 mil toneladas al año. Mining in Chile is is typical of a lot of our operations, where there are water shortages as well as sensitive biodiversity areas, and hence it's important for us to be able to make changes in those areas as quickly as possible. Ya básicamente se está apuntando a producir más con menos agua, generando un impacto positivo en las cuencas donde operamos, para todas las personas y comunidades. Esto se logra aumentando la eficiencia. One of the major challenges for the mining industry is that efficiencies have fallen because the grades that most mines are exploiting are very low. No es solamente cobre puro, no es como en las películas cuando va el minero y y golpea con una picota y saca la pepita de oro. The copper is spread throughout that rock and it is spread and it's usually quite fine grained, maybe between 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. Now what this means is to get one ton of copper. We're blasting and grinding 100 tons of rock. First, we blast the rocks out of the ground. We then place those rocks into crushers, which break them down into pebble sizes. And then we put them into mills with water until ultimately we break it down into the very, very small dust-sized particles that allows us to extract the copper. This means that the mineria consumes water and energy and produces large quantities of waste. So what we're trying to do in the future is to mine all the metal, only the metal, all the time. How do we take out just the 1% of copper and leave the rest behind? We have a whole portfolio of technologies that allow us to get to that point. Aquí en Lo Bronce, después de explotar la roca en la mina Rajo Abierto, estas son depositadas en la correa transportadora para su posterior procesamiento. Bulkor Sorting usa tecnología de detección para identificar lo antes posible cuáles rocas tienen la mayor cantidad de cobre y cuáles menos. Bulkor Sorting takes advantage of the fact that ore is not placed uniformly in the ore body, so you get areas of high concentrations and low concentrations. Rocas con bajo contenido de cobre son automáticamente removidas del proceso para su almacenamiento y posterior procesamiento o descarte como desecho. It means we don't need to take barren rocks through the rest of our water intensive and energy intensive process that we follow in order to extract the copper. 
Esta tecnología se encuentra eh, en etapa de, de pilotaje industrial en los bronces hoy, con cuatro sensores. Eh, esos sensores están hoy día instalados. Hemos estimado que bordea alrededor de un 10% el incremento de ley del material eh, que va a procesamiento y descartamos aproximadamente un 20% del material eh, que iba antes a procesamiento, hoy día va a descarte. Barcore sorting has been leveraged on the development of much, much better sensing equipment. That development continues apace. We can envisage a future by which we no longer need to blast and remove the material in order to extract the metals that we want. Adicionalmente, no nos quedamos ahí. Estamos desarrollando varias tecnologías nuevas, como otra tecnología es lo que llamamos el coarse particle recovery. Tradicionalmente, el método utilizado para extraer el, el cobre que se encuentra en, en los sulfuros eh, es la flotación. We've taken our ore, we've crushed it down to say 0.1, 0.2 millimeters. We put it into a slurry in a container called a flotation cell. We then add in some bubbles. And what happens is those bubbles rise up through the, the slurry. The copper mineral, chalcopyrite, does not like being in water. It will attach itself to the bubble and rise to the top. That's our copper mineral. And that will fall over the side. For conventional flotation, we require particles at almost dust size in order to be able to liberate the copper out of them. So what we typically do is we put the ore through the mills until they're very, very small sizes. Any oversized particles we simply put back into the process until they are of the right size. And milling is the most energy intensive process in mining. En solo molienda en minería es el 3% del consumo mundial. If we didn't have to break those particles right the way down to dust, we could reduce the amount of energy that we use by more than 20%. That led us to look at coarse particle recovery. In coarse particle recovery, we can do the flotation on particles that are much larger, up to half a millimeter or even higher. We've got lots of particles together in a fluidized bed and we're still able to pass air through the particles. But the air goes up through those particles a lot slower. And it means that a particle may only have one corner of its surface exposed. And so this is my particle, and only my thumb is exposed chalcopyrite. The rest of my hand is just waste, okay? But that material still doesn't like being in water. So when it sees a bubble come past, it will grab hold of the bubble and it will rise up. And it will go up the coarse concentrate that comes out of the coarse particle recovery then goes to a mill and gets ground down and put through conventional flotation. But what we've done is we've reduced the amount of material I'm putting through that final energy intensive process. In the soldado, eh, se está trabajando hoy en día en la construcción de una planta de recuperación de partículas gruesas entre la molienda tradicional y la flotación convencional, que es la primera en esta aplicación a nivel mundial. Somos pioneros. Eh, estamos todos súper emocionados porque va a ser el momento de ver en acción todo lo que hemos estado planificando y proyectando. Cuando uno introduce este concepto, eh, que quiere decir que voy a moler a tamaños dos o tres veces más gruesos que lo habitual que se utiliza en flotación convencional, the combination of both conventional flotation as well as coarse particle recovery together, we believe will give us a 20% increase in throughput, a 20% reduction in energy. Hence, for the same amount of water and for a less amount of energy, we can actually create more copper. Coarse particle recovery is an important technology in its own right. But one of the greatest things about CPR is waste products. Once we've removed the copper out of the coarse particles in a CPR unit, what we left with is coarse sand. Sand is like manna from heaven, because sand is what's going to help us solve one of the biggest challenges that a modern large mine faces. 
tailings. The material that's left over from the extraction process, which is now fine grained, 0.3 millimeters, mixed with water. It's wet sludge, so picture talcum powder with water. We pump that into very, very large storage facilities. Tailings facilities are highly engineered, large structures, and they are a big sink for water. Ese relave contiene mucha agua, pero lamentablemente, dado que son granulometrías muy finas, es bastante difícil poder recuperar toda esa agua. Across Anglo-American, currently we recycle up to 70% of our water, but the last 30%, most of that is lost in the tailings. But the waste from CPR enables us to develop and utilize hydraulic dry stacking, which I believe can be a fundamental game changer in tailings disposal going forward. With hydraulic dry stacking, we can co-dispose drainage layers of sand between layers of tailings. So almost like a, a sandwich. Los resultados hasta ahora son bastante prometedores y se han desarrollado a escala de pilotos en laboratorio. El desafío ahora es demostrar esto en escala real y eso es lo que estamos haciendo en el soldado. It's one of the largest ever tailings technology demonstrations that's ever been done in the mining industry. We're building an engineered embankment into which we're going to place two meters of tailings and then maybe a meter of sand and two meters of tailings, meter of sand. As we do that, the water will drain from the tailings into the sand, and then instead of going through the tailings layer below, it will tend to move horizontally. It will go out to the side of the facility, through the bottom of the embankment, into a return water dam. Permitiendo liberar en forma rápida el, el, el agua de los relaves, con esta técnica alternada, va a permitir evitar que esta agua quede retenida en los relaves y reingresarla al circuito en forma más rápida. Models have shown that our recycling will rise to maybe 85 to 90 percent. The potential impact on water consumption is quite fundamental. One of the benefits of hydraulic dry stack is that what you get left with is a very firm piece of land that can be reused again. So it allows us to terraform the landscape and to design it into what it would be used in its final end state. And that allows us to look at tailings facilities going forward as an opportunity. Can I build a flat area of land to be able to do some biomass development? Can I use that material to build a really effective solar farm and allow that community a carbon-free future of low-cost energy. There's lots of opportunities. Las tecnologías trabajan en tres integradas, desde bulk sorting, core particle recovery e hydraulic dry stacking. Y realmente es una revolución a la, a la, a la industria minera eh, mundial. These technologies are applicable to all of our sites. And what we have found is that whilst they're useful on their own, you actually get more benefits when you bring them together in a system. Nos queda un largo camino por recorrer, pero el cambio está en marcha. This is really only the beginning. We certainly haven't stopped in terms of striving to take this to the next level. We actually have the ability to fundamentally transform the way the industry has been run. And that will help us leave a better legacy around the world. <laughs>